In this video, we're talking about how you can do chemical engineering, if it's the right fit for you and why, and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees. Welcome back to the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. When I started this channel a couple years ago, I interviewed a bunch of engineers who were five to 10 years into their career to figure out what the industry was like, why they chose that type of engineering, and to really hear from them about what it's like to be a structural, a chemical, a water resources engineer, a robotics engineer, or have an internship at Tesla because I've never done any of those things. So I've been experimenting with this new format where I pick out the best questions that are all in one pattern and consolidate one of those long interviews for a small video for you just like this. I wanna give a big shout out to Sick Simon, a young engineer from Nigeria who helped me re-summarize this entire video. And another really big shout out to Ash Norton, who was the original feature and the subject matter expert for this video. If you wanna become a chemical engineer, comment below. If you want the 1% engineer kit, access to the Discord server, and a link to our new IG page, all of those things can be found in the description below. So without further ado, here's the questions that you're gonna be hearing from Ash, why she chose chemical engineering, she goes over the possible career options and avenues for chemical engineers, why she chose the university that she did. She also worked as a hiring manager within this space, so she knows exactly what engineering firms are looking for to hire people like you. She talks about the things that you guys should avoid if you're seeking a full-time job. She also has an MBA. She talks about how that can help you and delineate you from other engineers. Unless you wanna be a technical thought leader, then you shouldn't get your MBA. Guys, I hope you're ready for this video. So let's get right back into this summarized video, guys, with Ash Norton. How did you arrive at chemical engineering for being your career? Yeah, good question. So I actually had no idea what an engineer did, but my aunt said to me, hey, you should be an engineer. So I started digging into it, looking into it, um, and I knew out of my high school classes, I really loved chemistry, and I had this great opportunity to take um, a couple of weeks course at Eastern Kentucky University that it was just very general engineering for high school students. Um, and so really excited about that. And I realized that I really enjoyed how engineering allowed you to apply the science. Uh, and so with that, I learned, hey, engineering really might be for me. My aunt might be on to something. Um, so with, you know, how I loved chemistry and the engineering experience that I had, that's kind of what led me to chemical engineering. Love that little, little family nudge, little family advice goes a long way. Right. I'm, I'm following that heart. I yeah. love that. How it's like you kind of knew. I feel the same way about civil. Kind of had it in my heart. And then when you take the classes and you explore, it just kind of starts to snowball, right? I want to talk a little bit about your knowledge in chemical engineering career pathways. So I'd love to hear from you. What are the sort of pillars of career yeah. options for chemical engineers that you know you had to sift through in your mind, figure out yeah. what it's going to be for you. Yeah. So um, there, there are lots of different options. Um, so I'll start off by saying that um, one is going to be like oil and gas. One of my colleagues, um, a couple of my colleagues, actually worked for Marathon uh, upon graduating. So that's a big one. Um, any sort of manufacturing, especially um, if there's a chemical component to that. Uh, Toyota, that's another big one. So anything in the automotive industry. Um, so with pigments and um, that, so manufacturing is a big one. Um, a couple of friends actually graduated and have worked for L'Oreal. And so, um, you know, beauty and there's, there's a lot of formulation that goes into that. And so that's a really fun one. Um, pharmaceuticals, a couple of colleagues have worked uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, P&G, that's another big one. So um, how do you improve products in a way that uh, makes it so that they're really marketable? Uh, so P&G is a fun one. Uh, and then a couple of people have worked on um, kind of consulting organizations that work with these other companies. And so they'll do consulting work that allows them to work with multiple of these. So in addition to uh, my own experience, kind of uh, in the process improvement side of uh, working with the power plants. That's another one. And em environmental is a big one for chemical engineers as well. Lots of options out there for you guys. And you yeah. should, should be rewarded with awesome career options as chemical engineering because I'm a firm believer that 
any engineering is the hardest undergraduate major that you can do. And I've always talked about how I believe chemical engineering is the most challenging one. So if you can survive <laughs> university <laughs> and with a chemical engineering degree, it seems like you have a plethora of awesome options at your fingertips. So I'm happy to hear that, Ash. I appreciate that. For, for me personally, I enjoyed chemistry so much that um, I honestly think that electrical or mechanical or, you know, some of the other ones would have been more challenging for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, like you said, any engineering curriculum is going to be challenging. So yeah, I totally agree. That's that's why I tell people we're starting to split hairs here. When people are like, right. "Oh, is it <laughs> isn't like mechanical a little easier than electrical?" And it's like, "Well, yeah, maybe not. They're all right. really hard, guys. Like, come on." So for everyone who may not be familiar with the University of Cincinnati, take us back again to those moments where you were choosing school, and why is it that you chose that school, and what was it that attracted mm-hmm. you to to that university it was actually my last choice when I was looking at colleges and I said well I'll just go ahead and apply and that way if I don't get into any of these other colleges you know I know I'll get in there so that was kind of my thinking and applying um, but what I discovered as I looked looked into all of the colleges more and more um, yes the other colleges I looked at too it had really great programs, but the University of Cincinnati has a stellar co-op program. And so um, that is what really solidified it for me um, was I was able to, one, earn money, um, two, find out did I enjoy engineering, and then three, kind of get some work experience under my belt before I even graduated. And so because they had such a strong uh, co-op program, that's why I ultimately really dug in and and decided on the University of Cincinnati. Yeah, I think co-op programs are an awesome thing for students out there. I've seen the numbers for job placement rates for co-ops. I mean, you come out of school, you know people in the industry, you have experience, right? So I'm sure you encourage everyone to pursue a co-op program. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as a hiring manager, when I'm, you know, when I've in the past looked at resumes, those resumes that have experience, even as a co-op, they stand out because it's not just do you have that theoretical, you know, mental capability. It's can you apply it in a way that helps the organization. And so, you know, I encourage any engineering student to pursue a co-op or an internship, uh, even if where they're at doesn't have, you know, a solid program. Yeah. And I'm so happy that you talked about your experience as a hiring manager, Ash, because you're definitely an expert in this field. You have a lot of knowledge about what it takes to stand out for an engineering hiring team, what they're looking for, Mm -hmm. what may be some red flags. So this is my next question for you, Ash, is Maybe if you could scan back through all that experience, I'd love to talk about two things within that. Okay. What what to you are the key things, whether you be a co-op student or just an engineering student in general, what are the key ingredients that you need to make sure you are producing things that you are getting involved with to stand out in order to actually be the person that gets that interview? What are like the core, Mm -hmm. core things these students can do? Yeah, so really good question. Um, The first one would be any sort of co-op or internship. So something that has direct engineering applicability. Um, Also, don't underestimate some of the extracurriculars. So any way that you can demonstrate that um, you can work as a team, that you can um, apply your skills. Um, For our industry at Duke Energy, a lot of our engineering co-ops and then engineers worked at our power plants. And so actually any sort of mechanical aptitude, um, if, you know, working on race cars was a hobby, like that's actually something that would stand out for us. Um, Maybe working in a farming environment where um, you have to understand how a tractor works and how that equipment works, any sort of mechanical aptitude, that would help for my industry. So I would look at what's a skill that would help you apply it, even if it's not directly, I worked in a power plant, you know, what are the skills that would, you know, help you work in that way? Build up some applicable skills, 1% Nation. That's what it's going to take for you to stand out. And really quickly, Ash, because I know these are going to 
standout, like vibrant memories, maybe walk us through a couple of the big no-nos in terms of resume or cover letters or cold emailing, whatever, whatever it may be. But what are some things that we should avoid as engineering students seeking that full-time job? Yeah, good question. Um, so double, 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 triple, quadruple check your resume. Make sure that there are no grammatical errors because um, no, you're not going to be in the, you know, your full-time job judged on, you know, can you spell correctly? Can you do all that? But um, it's a signal of how much do you care? How much effort have you put into it? Um, and so as a hiring manager, if you haven't demonstrated that you're really interested, um, it just kind of gives a red flag that, hey, maybe they're not that interested and I'm I'm going to spend my time on somebody who is really interested. So that's the number one. Other than that, it's really just about how well you can um, match what your skill set is to what what the job is. Um, and so beyond that, there's really not that many red flags. Um, you'll definitely want to include GPA, um, even if it's not that great, um, because if not, that kind of throws up a red flag. What are they trying to hide? So it's kind of like, are they lying by omission? Um, that, that sort of thing. So uh, don't think that you have to have, you know, 4.0 GPA um, or you're not going to be considered. Just be as transparent as possible with that. So, Ash, before I forget, I do want to ask you a little bit about your MBA. Let's uh, shift gears here. Yeah. And if you believe that that has helped you in terms of having the confidence to start your business or if you learned some things that helped you at Duke or things like this, is that something you would suggest to the young engineers out there? Yeah, so I get this question a lot, um, both for the uh, MBA and whether or not the engineer should pursue their PE. Um, my number one suggestion is be pursuing something. So decide which one is going to benefit you the most in your career, which path would you like to take, um, but don't sit back and don't do anything. So I really believe that once you dig in or, you know, in our full-time engineer, that you're pursuing something, um, PE, MBA, maybe it's some other sort of development and leadership. So number one, be pursuing something. Um, for me, the MBA made the, made the most sense because um, I was already on a management track. Um, I was already kind of focused on being a leader in kind of the, you know, technical world. Uh, and so for me, that made sense. Um, it was also really, really nice for me that a bonus that I didn't expect was that I learned so much about the way other organizations did things. As I mentioned, all of my uh, co-ops and, you know, my work experience to that point had been with Duke Energy. That was the, the only company that I had kind of intimate knowledge of how they operated. And so by pursuing my MBA, I really got the chance to learn so much about all of these other organizations. And so for me, that that was an added bonus that I didn't even expect. Um, but then I also learned just so much just business knowledge of, you know, I didn't have to take accounting or economics or any of those courses um, for my undergraduate. And so it was really good to kind of explore the ins and outs of uh, that type of um, curriculum, you know, so that I could apply that to real world. Love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Ash, for all that MBA insight. I went yeah. to a technical master's program after undergraduate and it only took me three, four, five months to realize I'm like, hmm, I probably should have <laughs> pursued MBA. It just seemed like a better fit for me. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you can fill us in on some of that. Hey, 1% Nation. I hope you enjoyed that video with Ash Norton. Thanks again from Six Simon for helping me with the summary of the script. If this, video, if this video helped you guys and you want to become a 1% engineer, I'm starting to release more videos, trying to get up to two, three times per week. So make sure you hit that notification bell and subscribe. Smash that like button if this was supportive to you because I am having so much fun over here getting back to this community. Make sure you guys join the Discord because we are back. We are back. If you have a question about an upcoming video, comment below and check out the show. We have 105, 110 episodes of the show. Make sure you comment on videos. Make sure you like everything because I can't wait to build this community up to 100,000 subscribers. Thanks again, 1% Nation, and we'll see you again in another video. Peace out.